Durkham's disease. Think of your fat cells as peaceful citizens just going about their lives. Suddenly, in about one in one million people, a dictator takes over, forcing them into concentration camps to stick together. So they start clustering together, forming heavy, dense lipomas, soft tissue tumors that feel like bricks weighing you down. This is a rare disorder that causes the growth of painful lipomas, fatty deposits that occur under the skin. These lipomas typically develop on the torso, upper arms, and upper upper legs and are often painful to the touch. Now, lipomas dig their knives into your skin from the inside out, generating severe pain with even the slightest pressure or movement. Now, as these evil fat concentration camps multiply, they keep expanding to your muscles and nerves, putting them under constant strain. This disease causes an abnormal overgrowth of fat cells, but not the kind that gradually expands your waistline and makes you ugly for bikini season. In most cases, it's like having your nerve endings wired directly to a torture device, forever caught in searing and unbearable pain all day, every day. X-linked lymphoproliferative syndrome. This is a disease that is attached to the X gene. Now, let's go back to basic biology. Those born as boys have the XY gene, while those born as girls have the XX gene. In this one, the gene needs to be on both the X, so because boys have only one, you see where this is going. So we can imagine a young boy who seems perfectly healthy suddenly becoming deathly ill after a common cold. His lymph nodes swell massively, his liver and spleen enlarge, and he develops fevers, rash, and bleeding problems. This overwhelming inflammatory reaction is the hallmark of XLP. The body's immune system goes into overdrive trying to fight off the virus with horrible horrible consequences. Instead of tapering off once the infection is controlled, the immune response becomes a full-blown storm. The body's immune cells, the natural killer cells, multiply out of control. They infiltrate the bone marrow, liver, spleen, and lymph nodes, causing massive enlargements of these organs. If untreated, the cascade rapidly spirals, leading to bone marrow failure and complications that can be fatal in over 60% of cases. Harlequin ichthyosis. With harlequin ichthyosis, think of being a newborn baby whose entire body is encased in hard, thick skin plates. It's very similar to the skin pattern of an alligator or a crocodile. The plates are cracked, crisscrossed, and split apart like dried clay. Their faces stretched into a continuous cry of agony, eyes nearly sealed shut, ears and nostril openings deformed slits, mouths gaping black holes struggling to allow breathing. This is the appearance of of a baby born with harlequin ichthyosis. The skin issues are usually caused by a genetic mutation that prevents the skin from shedding keratin properly. Even their fingers and toes are trapped in hard, mitten-like gloves. Along with the abnormal and horrifying skin, these kids usually get robbed of their skin's most basic biological functions, too. No temperature control, no proper hydration, no defense against infections. They're born defenseless against all sorts of diseases. So that's why almost 98% barely make it past the first few days of life. Alveolar capillary dysplasia, ACD. This rare condition messes with the normal development of an infant's lungs. ACD disrupts the formation of the tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli and the little blood vessels surrounding them. So these poor babies have immature lungs that can't get enough oxygen into their bloodstream. It's like trying to breathe through a straw, just not enough air getting in. The root cause of ACD ACD is those genetic mutations that disrupt lung development before a baby is born. Essentially, the blueprint for building their lungs needs to be fixed from the get-go. Normally, as a baby's lungs form, tiny air sacs called alveoli start developing and spreading through the lungs. Surrounding each little alveole are super small blood vessels called capillaries. This tight connection between the alveoli and capillaries allows for proper gas exchange. Oxygen from the air is absorbed into the blood and carbon dioxide waste is expelled. But with ACD, those mutations cause the alveoli and capillaries to become misaligned and disconnect from each other during development. So instead of having all those efficient little oxygen uptake stations spread throughout the lungs, you end up with underdeveloped, useless air sacs. So when these ACD babies are born, even though their lungs look normal from the outside, internally it's a disaster zone. With so few properly formed alveoli connected 
addicted to capillaries, they can't get enough oxygen into their bloodstream no matter how hard they try to breathe. These tiny babies are essentially suffocating from lack of oxygen. Perhaps the worst part is that, despite doctors doing everything they can, most infants with ACD don't make it past their first birthday. Lay Syndrome Lay Syndrome is a rare inherited disorder that usually affects the central nervous system in infants and children. We can consider the case of a perfectly healthy baby who hits all developmental milestones, smiling, babbling, and reaching for toys. But then something goes wrong. The child starts regressing, losing skills they mastered, like sitting up, swallowing, or using their hands. Their little muscles become weak and floppy. This is how Lay syndrome often first reveals itself in infants between 3 to 12 months old. A genetic defect has disrupted normal energy production in their nerve cells, especially in the brain, brainstem, and regions controlling movement and respiration. As this medical crisis gets worse, other horrible symptoms emerge. Children develop feeding difficulties and stop gaining weight, seizures that become increasingly hard to control. On brain scans, you can spot the typical damage on both sides of the brain in places like the brainstem where things like breathing are controlled. This ongoing damage gradually takes away children's abilities to see, hear, move, or breathe by themselves to a point where the kids need help to do everything 24-7, 365 days for the rest of their lives. Pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. Your brain is an incredibly complex electrical grid with billions of neurons acting as power lines carrying vital signals. And just like a real city requires power plants to keep the lights on, your neurons need a steady supply of vitamin B5, pantothenate, to function properly. Pantothenate kinase enzymes work like power plant workers making fuel for neurons. PKAN is, on its own, a very difficult condition, especially when symptoms first appear in childhood or the teenage years. Suddenly experiencing involuntary muscle contractions, rigidity, lack of coordination, and slurred speech is usually incredibly challenging at that age. As the disease progresses, the disabilities tend to worsen. Many PKAN patients eventually require the use of a wheelchair and need substantial assistance with daily activities and self-care. Gorham's disease. Consider your skeletal system as the steel framing that gives your body its structure and shape, an important framework that supports your every movement and protects your vital organs. Without it, you'd be a mere pile of meat on the floor. Imagine your bones just started disappearing, almost like they were dissolving from the inside out. That's what happens with Gorham's disease. It causes certain bones in your body to progressively lose mass and density over time. The symptoms can start innocently, maybe some mild bone pain or swelling in your skull, jaw, shoulder, or pelvic region. But then the real problems kick in as more bone is reabsorbed and replaced with body parts other than bone. Suppose a weight-bearing bone like a femur is affected. In that case, weakened bones can lead to increasing pain, loss of mobility, and deformities, so simple movements become agonizingly painful as the skeleton disappears over time. In severe cases, the bone loss may be so massive that it causes the collapse of the entire human skeleton. Alpers disease. You can basically consider Alpers disease a rare but lethal genetic disorder without a cure that is like a ticking time bomb implanted at birth. You can imagine for a minute that you're a young parent, your precious newborn baby lying in your arms. Everything seems perfect until the doctor delivers some news. Your child has inherited Alpers disease. Fast forward three years. It's your child's birthday party. Everything seems perfect, filled with laughter and bright colors. Suddenly, your child experiences a severe seizure like a power surge. The baby or toddler starts going backward and losing abilities they were able to do before. They stop making eye contact, responding to sounds, or using their little hands properly. That's because Alpers makes the brain start degenerating and not working right. The kids develop seizures that happen a lot and are hard to control with medication. As Alpers gets worse, the kids lose more and more control over their bodies. Their muscles become stiff and jerky, making it hard to swallow food. A child who could play and interact becomes completely delayed and disabled over time. Many enter a dementia-like state all before their third birthday. Woolman disease. See, 
Every cell in your body has these little housekeepers called lysosomes. Their job is to remove cellular trash and break down fatty molecules such as cholesterol and triglycerides into reusable bits. Leading this housekeeping unit is an enzyme called lysosomal acid lipase. But in people with Wolman, it's like their lysosomal acid lipase supervisor stopped showing up for work one day and never returns. Suddenly, there's no one running that fatty molecule breakdown operation in the lysosomes. At first, it's just a little backup of oily trash collecting here and there, except that garbage keeps accumulating each week as the trash piles up. The lysosomes soon get hopelessly clogged to the neck with trapped fats and cholesterol. As the blockage spreads, those garbage-engorged cells start inflating like overstuffed balloons. Vital organs like the liver and spleen start ballooning up to massive bloated sizes under the weight of the accumulated fatty viscera. The cellular trash hits the fan from there, eroding and destroying cells. By the end, most Woolman children sadly don't make it past their first year as their whole body drowns in toxic waste. A disease you probably have right now and do not even know about is probably, well, if you want to know, your best chance is to go to our Discord and check out the answer. Joubert Syndrome. Our brain starts as just this simple tube in the embryo in the womb, but then it goes through the most complicated step-by-step -step folding process guided by the genetic instructions in our DNA. It's like the most complex origami puzzle you can imagine. Certain proteins act as these tiny molecular sculptors, carefully pinching and creasing the brain tissue to shape those folds and grooves we're all familiar with. Each crease has to be perfectly positioned based on the genetic blueprints. But with a condition like Joubert syndrome, these sculptors get fed the wrong instructions halfway through, and genetic mutations kick in that completely scramble or delete huge chunks of the folding code. So instead of making those precise creases in the right spots, the proteins start blindly grasping at the tissue, carelessly pinching it. The result is this weird disoriented origami brain replica that's all crooked and contorted. So while the brain's higher thinking functions may develop relatively normally, the basic control systems are plagued with serious problems. This affects important functions such as breathing, balance, muscle tone, and motor skills causing severe impairment. Many children with Joubert's syndrome experience life-threatening breathing problems, significant clumsiness and coordination issues, difficulty controlling tongue and mouth movements, and jerky, uncontrolled movements. Though complex and intricately formed, genetic errors make their brains deeply flawed. So essentially, a single error in their DNA disrupted the entire development process, leading to huge consequences. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. HLH. Think of your body's immune system going into hyperdrive, like an out-of-control killing machine that can't be stopped. That's what happens with HLH. Certain immune cells called lymphocytes and histiocytes multiply wildly and attack other cells throughout the body. In the early stages, HLH often pretends to be a viral illness with high fevers over 101 degrees Fahrenheit that stay for over a week. Patients feel extremely tired and may have a sore throat, cough, nausea, and abdominal pain. But then, more worrying signs appear, like enlarged liver and spleen, easy bruising and bleeding, seizures, and breathing difficulties. What's happening is these overactive immune cells are infiltrating and causing inflammation in organs and tissues all over the body. They're also eating up healthy blood cells, which leads to those low blood counts. HLH turns into a rapidly progressive cytokine storm in its most severe form. Basically, where immune protein go into overdrive, triggering multiple organ failure, bleeding disorders, and nervous system impairment. Your body is being destroyed from the inside out by your soldiers, in this case, and you're left next to death once the symptoms start. Undine's Curse To give you context on how bad this disease is, we must first have a quick literature lesson. In Folk's book Undine, the main character is Undine, a water spirit who marries a knight named Holdbrandt. They have a dark rule in their marriage. If Holdbrandt is unfaithful, Undine must kill him. When Oldbrandt falls for another woman, Undine, bound by the laws of her world, takes away his ability to breathe automatically in his sleep, fulfilling the curse. So for Holdbrandt to stay alive, he has to think of taking a breath 
each time. In Ondine's curse, it's the same case where it's a system failure in the automatic breathing process. For most people, breathing is a subconscious routine managed by the brain. But with Ondine's curse, it's as if that centralized control room where the automatic switch is kept is severely understaffed or the workers have fallen asleep. The messengers responsible for regulating breathing patterns go permanently AWOL, especially during sleep. While awake, some with milder forms can breathe normally by conscious thinking about it, manually overriding the system, but the moment they fall asleep, chaos comes next. Diffuse Intrinsic Ponting Glioma It's a type of brain tumor that mainly affects kids. More often than not, it will end in a coffin. The thing that makes DIPG so problematic is where it's located, right in the pons, which is the part of the brainstem that controls all sorts of vital functions like breathing, sleeping, and blood pressure. So you can imagine how tricky it is for doctors to try to operate on something like that without causing some serious damage. But even beyond the local issue, these tumors are just plain nasty. They're what we call diffuse, meaning they don't have nice clean borders. Instead, they kind of spread out and infiltrate the surrounding brain tissue. It's like trying to get rid of a really stubborn weed that keeps popping up everywhere. See, because DIPG tumors are located right there in the pons area of the brainstem, the symptoms can be really varied and dramatic depending on what functions are being affected. Often, one of the first things parents notice is their child developing something called crossed paralysis, where one side of the face becomes paralyzed and the opposite side of the body goes weak or numb. Scary stuff for a little kid, right? Basically, any function controlled by the brainstem is gone. And then there are the headaches. They can be intense and unrelenting because the tumor is causing increased pressure in the brain. At a certain point, kids with DIPG may lose the ability to walk or even get out of bed on their own as the paralysis spreads. They become completely dependent on their parents and caregivers for every need. DIPG tumors are also extremely resistant to things like chemo and radiation therapy. Sure, those treatments might slow the tumor down for a bit, but they rarely do the trick in the long run. The stats on it are also abysmal. Only 1% of those affected make it past five years. 